Good evening, folks. I'm here to find my ship, and I am also here in rainy, rainy Tokyo, just having gotten out of the Villain Saga stage play that has been put on for the last two weeks here in Tokyo. I'm just rambling here. I'm just going off grid. This is not scripted. Uh, see where this takes me. I did not plan this trip to just see the play. No, I was coming here before then. I booked it like a whole year in advance, and then this popped up, and I was like, <laughs> hey, hey, sometimes luck favors us, and I had to go. Come on, you know me. I had to go. Let me just say, it's a stage play. I'm not a connoisseur in stage plays. I've not seen that many. So things that may be really impressive to me may not actually be that impressive compared to other stages, stage plays, um, theatre performances. Um, and other things that are super impressive may have gone underneath my radar. Uh, just putting that caveat out there, right? So what is this about? This stage play was actually set up into two different stage plays, which, so I missed the first one. I didn't realize that was the first one. Oh my word, my camera's getting all clogged up here. Basically, I knew those two types of plays. I was confused at what they were exactly when I went to uh, sign up for it. So I just booked one because these stage places, this one was expensive. It was uh, 11,000 yen. 60 quid that's why i remember bro 60 pounds so around about maybe 70 to uh, 80 usd i would presume just off the top of my head so about the actual play itself i watched the second play which is actually just the second half of the prologue so it kind of started from uh when gratianus was involved and they were in wales and then it went from there basically and overall uh, my first impressions were i was well impressed um the reason was uh, because i was <laughs> I had very low expectations. I literally had no clue what I was getting into. It was 60 pounds, right? But it was also three hours of stage performance. And I found my, my, you know, my attention waning towards the end um, because it was all in Japanese. There's no subtitles. I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, I do, because I'm a big fan of the manga. But There's additional lines being said in a couple of places. They've skipped some stuff out. They've, um, you kind of moved stuff around, not moved, but like uh, changed priorities in certain ways. Sorry, it's just busy and I'm being an obnoxious gaijin in the middle of Tokyo right now. Um, but yeah, so it's quite interesting how they kind of allocate resources for different actors. So, so actors, so characters like Atlee get a bit more love. Uh, characters like Anne don't, don't appear at all because she's a one-off, right? So some things like that, and lots of their character performances, like they do have actresses there. There's not a lot of female roles. So there's actually just, you know, female warriors inside uh, Askeladd's bands and kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, as there's also loads of dancing uh, in like this kind of, um, I would assume some sort of Roman dress. So when Lydia, like there's some kind of, it's, it's out there if I just say it, uh, but. <laughs> I don't know really how to explain it, but yeah, there's, there's dancing in it. Um, there's also a few kind of, not musical numbers, because no one's actually singing in them, but there are moments when Canute is getting followed by a lot of people with fake lanterns and stuff. That was pretty crazy. I mean, there was a moment um, where Willibald literally dives through, Willibald literally dives through Bjorn's legs when they're like attacking him and following um, Canute in the snow, like when Atlee, and uh, Torgrim have turned against Askeladd. That was that was that was crazy. Uh, um, the actual action itself, like when there's so many moving pieces, it is so impressive how they. I mean, it, it's pretty clear. Like they, they give a decent like three inches at least between the swords and actually hitting other actors. But it's convincing. And the, whoever does the soundboard at the back for the sound effects, there's like music going up and down. It's very adaptive, which you know does have give, give me a few concerns for the actual uh, live stream event because live stream stuff is is tough and you have like three guys in the back there doing all the technical work they got no shout out at the end so i made sure guys go say thank you to them um even though there was a few issues i mean there was a moment where you know thor's isn't that uh, involved in this part of the story and so it was like one moment where he like actually missed his jump onto one box from another jump and it's like pretty they had to do quite a bit of acrobatic stuff not anything insane but like and he like slips and he misses <laughs> missing so like but the thing is he still gets up and like he continues his job and he like perfect timing still right he, he may figures a way to do it so that was uh, really impressive stuff there are just so many unique aspects to this that 
because it's in a way more accurate to the manga than the actual, um, you know, uh, anime because it has none of the anime original content, um, as far as I could tell. Maybe there's a few lines at, at there because I don't understand Japanese. So yeah, but you know, it stays pretty similar. But then also cuts stuff like Anne's whole family instead has like a really pretty, pretty, uh, pretty strong just uh, slaughter scene. Where, and you know, guess what? I mean, Atli gets a few big moments, so yeah. Uh, oh, we got the train going. Choo choo! Look at that. My phone is covered in water. The train has left us. Yeah, there's honestly so many small things to talk about. Um, but one thing I found really impressive was actually the casting for some of the actors. I mean, Asklad sounded very similar to um, the voice actor in. In, in the anime and Thorkel was on point like he was pretty tall um, he wasn't as tall as Thorkel would actually be but the guy was at least 6'3", six, 6'5", six, six, which um, as I learned in Japan is pretty pretty tall it seems so the guy on stage had a massive presence he nailed the voice I mean characters like Ragnar he actually wasn't that like chubby or overweight or didn't have a cone head but his like presence still really worked and it was like a kind of interesting new vibe to the character he had a bit more band to his Thorfinn in that kind of rabbit scene like Thorfinn turns up with a massive stuffed rabbit I mean it is crazy guys it's, it's insane I it's not that insane but it's just funny seeing how they take these things that you wouldn't have thought about otherwise you know like in the final scene Thorfinn just has a random prop of him with a fork and a sausage because that's his one prop for that scene. Thorfinn, <laughs> my guy, he can he can he can screech to the heavens. What, what can I say? The acting overall was really really impressive overall. Um, and I guess to close this off, just a couple of thoughts about kind of the more meta aspect and where this places itself in the villain saga fandom. Uh, first things first, like um, I was a bit worried about this just because of how much Yuki Mura is tweeting about it and how much they're saying, oh, that you can get tickets at the doors. These tickets were not sold out at all. Like, the auditorium could probably hold like uh, 450 people. I'd give a guess when I was doing like a quick count of numbers. I reckon we hit maybe like uh, the, a, a, a quarter to 30% uh, of that, you know. And that kind of suggests to me that, you know, Vinland Saga is not nearly that popular, but in Japan at least. Um, I was one of uh, two other white guys I saw. Uh, no, I was one of three white guys. There were two other white guys I saw, but um, which wasn't that surprising. I mean, I was surprised to see any other white guys, and I went to talk to them, and they were really nice, good chaps. Um, and perhaps the most interesting thing, which I didn't think of at all, but the the viewers were basically, I'd say, a 90 to 10, like it was a 90 10 ratio of female to male. Like the vast, 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 vast majority of the people at this stage play watching, they're all women. Um, now, I was talking to some of the other guys, uh, um, the guys I met, and they kind of suggested that this was due to stage plays being in Japan being a much more common activity for women to do. So that says that, you know, suggests that there's going to be a larger female population there, just as a form of media and entertainment. Fair enough. Uh, but the second thing is that lots, actually, I didn't realize this at all, but a lot of the main actors of like Canute and Thorfinn, and they were like idols or something like that, and yeah, I don't really, I don't know much about them, but that could be another reason why like, they already have an existing fan base and people are just supporting their work, which is uh, an interesting aspect of Japanese culture, which is talked a lot about, but I wasn't expecting to really see on this trip. So I didn't talk actually to any of the um, people around me, any of the women around me, because uh, I didn't really want to bother them. It's an interesting environment where, like, at a panto, I'm used to getting hooping and hollering and cheering. You know, when the pe when the actors come back on and we want an encore, you get some whistling. But here, it was definitely just like, just clap. You know, I'm trying to be as still as possible because everybody, no one is moving, you know, during this play. You know, you, you actually can feel, I can feel the people next to me only move when the lights went off as soon as we could see them move and readjust themselves in their seats, you know, like it's, it's a very like minimize yourself, you know, even like the laughing, you know, when, you know, uh, the Canute's act had a bit of a monologue at the, at the end of the stage, at the end of the play saying thank you to everybody. Um, there was some laughter there, I didn't understand anyway he said, but that was like the most laughter that evening, like even laughing at Thorkel, like they're like suppressing the laughter. It's, it's really, really interesting, uh, just a different way of how I've experienced um, theatre plays before. And so, uh, you know, as fans of Vinland Saga, I think it would be awesome if we could, yeah, it's really awesome that we get this stuff. This feels really, really weird and out of left field, 
and I'm really super glad I got to enjoy it. I would encourage anybody who calls himself a big fan of the Saga to go out there and enjoy this uh, when it gets to that live streaming phase, if you can. It is worth it just for the curiosity and see how, the, if you really like the story, right, see how they adapt it differently, right? See how they take these small little moments and change them. Um, and it's just a new way to experience it, right? Like, it's the closest thing to live action that we're probably going to get, at least for the time being. And good grief, I am so wet. Uh, I don't know what what form this is going to come out with, but I hope you all guys enjoyed this little ranty video and it wasn't too bad. I don't, don't even know what it's going to be. We'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.